One thing all boat owners should know about is cavitation and ventilation. Exactly what they are and how they affect your boat is really important. So ventilation actually occurs by air getting sucked down into a prop. When a prop spins as fast as these things do, they cause a really high pressure behind the prop, obviously the water being forced out, and that creates a very low pressure at the front of the prop. And that low pressure causes a vacuum. Air gets sucked down into that vacuum, and when air comes in contact with a prop, it loses its grip on water. A prop will just spin in air and have no effect whatever, whatsoever, it'll be like a fan. But in the water, it actually is under a fair bit of load because it's pushing the water backwards and propelling the boat forward. So when you steer a boat really sharp or you've got it trimmed out too far and you hear the boat over rev, that's when the prop loses its grip on the water and therefore the engine just over revs because it's got no load on it. So that's usually caused by ventilation. Look, cavitation is quite interesting. The science is that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure but if we increase the pressure there it takes a lot more heat to get that water to boil so the water will boil at like 150 degrees or 200 degrees if you double the pressure that's why pressure cookers work so well they increase the pressure significantly inside the cooker so the water is actually a lot hotter than 100 degrees because 100 degrees at atmospheric pressure is as hot as water can get but the same happens if you, well, the reverse happens, I should say, if you lower the pressure. If you bring the pressure right down to zero, um, then water will boil at room temperature. It'll boil at like 15 or 20 degrees. And that boiling water actually creates steam and little steam bubbles that comes off the prop. And you can see in this little diagram I put off the internet here, it's a great illustration of how cavitation forms bubbles that spiral along with the prop and cause um, the prop to slip somewhat because it doesn't have full contact with the water. It's got those air bubbles in them. And even though those air bubbles are actually steam from the water boiling and only in contact with the very tips of the prop, it does two things. It does cause the prop to slip a little bit and become a little bit ineffective, not anywhere near as bad as ventilation, but it also causes a lot of damage to the prop as well. You can see on this picture here of this prop, the pitting you can see on the edge of the prop is actually caused from cavitation. And what happens is those steam bubbles create little tiny explosions as they pop and millions and millions of these explosions over a long period of time can cause little uh, damage and pitting to your prop. You can see on my prop here on my small boat, there's very slight signs of it because being such a small boat and it also has a um, hydrofoil on it, which hydrofoils do prevent a little bit of cavitation, do prevent ventilation as well. And I'll explain that in just a sec too, but you can see it's only a very slight bit of damage. I'm not gonna worry about changing the prop because of that, but some props on bigger boats that do have a cavitation problem, the prop needs to get changed every couple of years because that pitting just causes so much wear and tear on the prop. So what outboard manufacturers do is they have this anti-cavitation or anti-ventilation plate. And funny thing is, if you read manuals and stuff on outboard motors, and I've read many of them over the years while I've been repairing these things, and it states that it's an anti-ventilation plate, and in other places in your manual, it'll call it, call it an anti-cavitation plate. So they do use the anti-cavitation, anti-ventilation plate interchangeably. So they're both doing the same thing. And what this plate is here to do is to avoid um, the prop sucking air down from the, um, above the prop itself where that low pressure system is occurring because this is the area here where the low pressure system occurs and it's going to want to suck air from up above it. So that prevents that. But also because of the um, pressure change from this plate being here, it also prevents a lot of um, cavitation as well. And there's a bit of science to it and I don't really understand it completely, but these, without these plates, the prop will just ventilate and cause a lot of cavitation as well. So these are worth their weight in gold. And a lot of boats will have a bigger plate on them. If we go over to my 30, just check this out. You can see on my little 30 outboard here, I've got a hydrofoil set up. Now, hydrofoils do an amazing job at preventing a problem you're having with your boat. And that problem may well be too much ventilation. So 
if you've got your boat trimmed out uh, and you go to take a corner and it ventilates really easily, then a hydrofoil will help because it increases that surface area to prevent too much air coming down into the prop. And also when you turn, your prop becomes, your prop swings up closer to the surface and can suck air down in, from the side and hydrofoils cover a bit of that. So they make a big difference when it comes to ventilation. The jury's out on how much difference, if many, much at all, it helps on cavitation. I'm sure it probably makes a little bit of a difference because it does reduce that massive low pressure and the lower the pressure, the easier it is for the water to boil and therefore you'll create more cavitation. So look, I think it makes a bit of a difference, but that I'm not too sure of. But why hydrofoils make a big difference is they cause lift in the boat. Now this boat here I've only had for um, about five months and I've persisted with a problem I've had with the boat for a little while because I do avoid putting um, hydrofoils on the boat because look, if you don't need a hydrofoil, don't go out and buy one. If you've got a problem with your boat, then think about putting a hydrofoil on to try to see if it fixes the boat. Now I've just worn, gone and ordered a SE300 hyd hydrofoil. As you can see in the photo here, this is what an SE300 is. Because I live in Weeper, I couldn't get one locally, so I've had to go and order it online. So it'll be a couple of weeks before it gets here. But the reason why I've bitten the bullet and ordered one is because I need to get a little bit more lift from the back of the boat. How do I do that with a hydrofoil? And the reason why you put a hydrofoil on a boat for me is they work like an aeroplane wing and they lift the back of the boat. So with my boat, I've got, with my new boat, I should say, I've got two new batteries in the back, some big deep cycle batteries. I've got the weight of the engine. I've got my fat ass sitting in the back of the boat as well. I've got two chairs there, so my passengers are in the back of the boat. So all I've got up the front is a light lithium battery to run the electric motor and a bit of storage. So all my weight is at the back of the boat. The engine's big enough to launch me out of the hole and gets on the plane pretty quick. So I wasn't too worried about not having a hydrofoil, but now that I'm getting more and more weight in the back because of the extra, ba extra battery and stuff, I do feel like I need some more lift from the back. And that's exactly what these things do. A lot of people will tell you that they're a waste of time and they're a waste of money and they're not. They are if you haven't got a problem with your boat. So if your boat launches out of the hole okay, it trims out okay, doesn't porpoise too much, and porpoising is the front of the boat bouncing up and down, you don't need a hydrofoil. But for me, there's so much weight at the back of the boat that if I get another big bloke in the boat with me, then it's slow to launch out of the hole and therefore it bogs down at the back quite a bit. So with the pressure of the water running over these things, like normal wings, um, like wings on an aeroplane, I should say, there's a high pressure and a low pressure, and that's what causes the plane to lift. It sucks up because of the low, the difference between the pressure on the wings, and that's exactly what these things do as well. The reason why they get you on the plane a lot quicker is because as you go to launch and move forward, the back of the boat wants to lift up, and it also throws the front of the boat up as well naturally. So uh, with that whole motion, the front being lift up like it normally does, and the back of the boat being lift up too, the boat just gets thrown on the plane a whole lot quicker. That can make a difference when you're running as well because it's lifting more of the boat out of the water. It's gonna make you go a little bit faster and use a little bit less fuel. I've owned quite a few boats over the years and I guess probably half a dozen of them have had hydrofoils on them to improve their performance. Most of them have slowed me down a little bit and I'm talking about maybe one kilometre an hour or two kilometres an hour because of the extra drag on the foil. This is only a small one, doesn't have much drag on it, but the big SE300 that I'm going to put on the, on the CJ will probably slow me down a little bit. But then again, I won't know until I put it on because the extra lift I get out of it may make that boat a little bit faster as well. Facing out and fitting a hydrofoil to your boat, just make sure that your boat engine is set up at the right height. Now when you buy a new boat, the retailer or the uh, dealer will actually set this up for you. Hello Stella. And but there's actually holes in the back of the boat where you can adjust it into four different locations. And I've got to say that even one inch of lift makes a massive difference to a boat. My wife's always saying to me one inch would make a massive difference. Don't know how she knows so much about boats, but she's absolutely right. So in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna have a hydrofoil arrive for this. So I will show you how to fit it. They're really simple to fit. But more importantly, I've tested this boat at certain rev ranges and trim settings to see what sort of speed I get out of them. So it'll be interesting if the hydrofoil slows this thing down or speeds it up a little bit. And I reckon with the lift I'm gonna get from the back of this boat, 
It may even speed it up a little bit.